Now, before we insert data into the database, let us add some codes. Now, recall that we at the top here, we said if the input fields are not empty, then this should be executed. Then we added an else statement. Here, what the code that we enter into this else statement is to check if the input fields are empty. If they are empty, then it will display some errors. So we're going to start. We say if empty, that is the first name. So if the first name is empty, then we throw an error. But we're instead we're going to use same a bootstrap alert. Just copy this, then we paste into this. But for first name, we used um, arrow three button. So what we can see is the first name field cannot be blank. First name field cannot be empty. First name field cannot be empty. Then the next thing we check for the last name. So we check for the last name. For the last name, we check. And last name was error four. So see error four. So last name field. Last name field cannot be empty. Then we do the same for the email. So for the email, we say email field. Email field cannot be empty. Then lastly for the password. That is pass underscore word arrow five so we say password field cannot be empty so if we check yes it's correct so what this validation will do is it will check if the input fields are empty we are using this php function empty to check now another thing we need to do we need to include this insert.php file inside the signup.php so what we do is we just go at the top of it then we include the file so to include the file so to include the file we type php include and inside of it we navigate to the folder so it will be dot we take out this dot and forward slash takes us out of the current folder and into another folder scripts slash then we have insert.php so we close yeah with this we have now inserted the or included the insert.php script inside the signup.php another thing we need to do is um let's go to the index.php for us to see the um errors we need to as well include this variables that was that were created this error variables that were created if we decide to go into our browser to test the it will throw an error telling us that these variables are not declared. Let's go to the index.php and let's comment out the reg.js file so that it will allow us to see the PHP validation errors. So what we do is we just comment it out. If you are using brackets, you just you highlight it then 
control slash it will comment the scripts so we are doing this so that we can see the errors from the server side now if we go to our browser and we refresh the page we're supposed to see then if we click on submit we get some errors now here it says use of undefined constant word line 90 in start.php so let's go to line 90 line 90 or uh, here it's supposed to be underscore so it's supposed to be underscore then if we refresh then we see that nothing happens the reason is because we don't have or we have not called these variables now for us to call these variables we need to declare them as global variables declaring them as global variables will allow us to use them outside of this script so we declare them as global variable so we use the keyword global then error one error two error three error four error five now declaring this as global variables can allow us to use them outside of the scripts then the next thing we need to do is we need to call them inside the signup.php so that when there are errors the errors will be displayed so let's go down here we call the the functions so the first function we are going to call is the error one so we do that with php then we use the echo statement we use the echo statement echo then we echo the value or the error one value we copy we paste now it's just for us to change so two three four five and we we'll save this so the next thing we need to do is let's go to our browser to see then we just come here we we'll refresh now if we click submit without any values in the input fields yeah we see the errors email field cannot be empty the first name last name and the password field cannot be empty and also we can check that other validations work as well so we just type values into it and we click submit now we see that it says email is invalid only letters are allowed for first name only letters are allowed for last name password must be between 7 and 15 characters so as we can see that the server side validation also works so the reason why we did this is in case the user doesn't have javascript on the browser then the server side validation can work as well so in the next video we continue with the sign up